Hey, it's Joel, 3D printing nerd. This is the Lowe's Taz 6, and it's a wonderful machine. I, I love the build volume. I, I love the extruder. I think it's a good design. Lowe's Bot's a wonderful company. I like what they do with their Libra innovation and their open software, open hardware policy. It's good. It's really good. I like it. However, Lowe's Bot decided to send me one of these things, and this is the Moore Struder, M-O-A-R, Moore. Instead of the 0.5 millimeter nozzle that you usually get with it, this includes a nozzle that is 1.2 millimeters in diameter, allowing you to print, as it says on the back, up to 100 grams per hour. Neat. Lowspot also sent along this giant spool of Polymaker Polylite filament. In fact, let's just get it out of the box right now. It's the first time I've opened it. Doo -doo -doo. Look at this. Have you ever seen filament come with a foam packing? I haven't. <laughs> Polymaker Polylite PLA. Holy cats. Jeez. Look at that. <laughs> that's that's you, Josh. This is huge. That's huge. It's huge. All right, on the Lulzbot uh, Taz Six, I almost threw that. Oh. It'll go just like that. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take off this extruder. We're gonna put on the more extruder, and we're gonna do a test and see how long it takes to print something that might normally take hours. We'll see if we can do it in minutes. Maybe minutes. There we go. The back of the box does give requirements, and it says in the box is the Morse extruder, the mounting screw and washer, a sample length of tea glaze filament, and PVA-based glue stick. It does say not included is the Lulzbot Taz desktop printer. I do have that. And a 2.5 millimeter hex key. Thankfully, Lulzbot includes these wonderful little tool bags with all of their printers. And as you run the zipper around the edge and expose the insides, you get to see this wonderful set of Allen keys. And if I look right there, a 2.5 millimeter hex key is right there. All right, well, let's move this spool out of the way so we have some room. I'll set it aside. Let's break into this more Struder box. I do have my handy dandy Swiss Army knife. The more Struder. All right, there it is. That's the more Struder. So unlike the 0.5 millimeter normal extruder system that's on the Taz, this is a 1.2 millimeter nozzle. It actually has a huge hole on it. Plus, it has this. It has this incredibly long heater block because you're pushing filament through so fast. You have to heat it quickly. That's what that's there for. Oh, inside this box. Uh, oh, firmware update required. Oh, and a congrats that tells me where I got some stuff. Here is the sample tea glaze. Here is the PVA stick. Here is the screw. There is the washer in there. I do need to update the firmware. Let me go get my laptop. Where's the camera? Let me go get my laptop and we'll be right back. A few moments later. I've got my laptop here. It's a MacBook Pro and I've got a USB to USB-A cable. So let's see, the cable plugs in back here on the Lowell spot. The cable plugs in here on my MacBook. And according to the latest stable version of Cura, I plug the printer into the computer, I turn on the printer, and then I click this button that says flash the firmware. Okay, well, once it's done, we'll, we'll continue. All right, so the firmware that I just flashed on the Taz 6 here is for the more Struder. So now what we can do is turn it off, unplug the USB cable, and begin the process of installing. Lulzbot is actually really good about having great documentation, fantastic support, plus being an open source and open hardware company, everything that they're developing, such as the Taz 7, uh, has documents online. So you can go and find everything you've ever wanted to know about all the cool stuff that Lulzbot is doing because in their development uh, repository, they actually have a research division and you can just go get lost in that. It's fantastic. All right, so it says I need to position the tool head at 200 millimeters off the build plate. I would say that's close enough. I need to now disconnect 
the wire harness right here. And then I'm gonna use that two and a half millimeter Allen key and I'm gonna remove this screw. It does, it, it does help you if you turn the screw the right direction. So I'm gonna take that and I just take it off. It's as easy as that. Now the new tool head is gonna go on. Ah, record the Moore Struder E-steps. So on the back of each Moore Struder, they're gonna write the E-steps value that you're gonna need to enter into the printer or the Cura software in order to make it work correctly. And in the case of my Moore Struder, it's 814, 814. Let's open up this baggie and let's get the new screw. <laughs> the new screw. New screw, all right. So this screw that comes with the Moore Struder is a little bit longer than the one that comes with the single head. So I thought it was a really good idea to actually use the one included with the tool head. It's smart. Mounting it goes like this, and then the screw goes through, just like that. There's my Allen key. It's attached, now I just need to plug the cable back in. Notice the Lulzbot people did put a nice piece of foam over these uh, prongs because uh, they care. The wiring harness is now connected. Update more Struder E-steps. Okay, so now what I need to do is turn on the printer. With the TAS-6 on, we go into the menu system and I think it's under configuration, maybe? I'm gonna go advanced settings and then I'm gonna find the E-steps, because they're in there. E-steps, right at the bottom. I'm gonna select that, and now I need to change it. What was the number? 814. 814. Oh, almost had it, there we go, 814, and we're done. So now, we can go all the way back to the main screen, and we're good to go. All right, so now what it wants me to do is the test. It's gonna want me to load this filament as the test, which is fine. It's totally fine. It's also gonna want me to load the open software hardware vase model, which looks cool, and you'll see that printing. And then we're gonna print it in spiral vase mode. So, let's heat it up, let's get this in there, and let's print that model. While Josh is setting up this shot, I'm gonna tell you right now, I've loaded the T-glaze onto the little spool holder and I've spit it out of the large PTFE tube. There's a little bit of T-glaze filament in the more Struder from their testing. I'm heating it up to, I think, 240C and I'm gonna pull it out. I'll put this in, I'll then slice the model. I will copy it to the SD card, I'll stick it in the TAS and then we'll start the print. This camera should catch the gloriousness of this juicy fat toothpaste style layer being laid down by the Moore Struder. All right, before I forget, I do need to put on some of this PVA glue stick because uh, it's PEI. Some filaments tend to stick to PEI a little bit too well. Uh, flexibles for sure. So I put a layer of glue stick down where the vase is gonna print. What the glue stick does is it allows the part to not stick too much to the PEI because it's, it's an interface layer between the PEI sheet and the model. There you go. All right, so as we wait, I will give you a little bit of detail here. This print is expected to take 45 minutes and it's supposed to use 7.55 meters of filament equating to 60 grams. Uh, so before we switch to this extruder on the other extruder, so this is supposed to print with a 1.2 millimeter layer height. Um, that would do that would do up to 0.4. So we're probably quadrupling the the speed at which we can print. So we're maybe doing this in 20% of the time. Go go go, Lulz bot Taz six with your more extruder head. That so first. What it's gonna do, it's gonna touch the head to that piece of metal, that little metal button right there. And that signifies Z height, or the, the height at which the nozzle needs to be. And then it can touch each of these four corners to get a layout of the bed, and it assumes the bed is a flat surface. So if it knows the four corners, then it knows the skew it may be at. It's ejecting some of the filament right now because it doesn't want filament to ooze out while it's doing the check of the bed. And in, in order to ensure it, it rubs the nozzle across this 
fabric-y strip of something. You can recreate it using, I think, some ABS juice and some velvet. Well, it seems to be laying down some filament. What we'll do is we'll get some shots while it is laying down the filament. We'll let it complete, and then we'll take a look at the print when it's all done. Okay, the print is done. The print head is going to move away from the model, and in true Lulzbot fashion, it's gonna back the build plate up to let the build plate cool, to let the model settle, to order some beans and rice from Taco Bell. I don't know. So we're just a few minutes away from this being done, and then we'll wrap it up. There we go. So because we put the glue stick down, it acted as a release agent, and this tea glaze was able to come off the build plate just fine. Look, it's got a little, uh, it's got a little thing to hang it from. So this is the Open Software Hardware, the OSHW vase, and it's printed with 1.2 millimeter layers, and it was just oozing out of that more struder. I'm not gonna lie, it looked really good. It's rigid. I mean, it it, it bends a little bit, but the the feel of the model is more like the feel of a model off the CME CNC Part Daddy because the wall is such a thick, single extrusion. It's, it's fantastic. I love the look of this. In fact, James from xrobots.co.uk is the one that makes all those really cool robots that do stuff, but he's been printing a lot of really big Lego compatible bricks to make skateboards. And he's been using a more Struder on his Taz 3D printers. Oh, this is cool. I'm excited. Well, look at that. We printed this and it turned out wonderful. So this is the TAS 6. This is the Morse Struder that we just took out of the box, installed. I'm really excited to print some really big things with it because it should be able to print them with much less time. I think that's fantastic. And there's the bed moving forward, just in the nick of time. I'm gonna call it good. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to hit that bell to be notified of when cool new stuff is uploaded to the channel. A big thanks to everybody that supports me and the channel via Patreon or YouTube Red or if you let the ads play. And finally, don't forget to hug each other more because I love you guys. As always, this is cool and high five.